Driverless Cars? Yes, but when? By Andrew D. Atkin, 17th of January 2015, and my blog is Building Utopia. Though there is a consensus that driverless cars are the future, there are many commentators claiming that we won't have them until about 2040, or some faraway time like that. And in spite of the fact that Google's driverless cars have already clocked up over a million kilometres in fully autonomous mode. What the concern and potential delay really boils down to is safety. The first fully autonomous cars need to be safe enough so that we can be sure enough that we want them on our roads. But in achieving that end, I see no reason why driverless cars should be 20 years away. Not with the technology being already thoroughly demonstrated and largely developed. Anyway, let me give you a model of what I think would be the best first step application for driverless cars, where the focus is for maximum safety so as to facilitate early acceptance by regulators, so we can then have them on our roads sooner rather than later. Let me model a very cautious, conservative, possible first step into the market. Firstly, driverless cars will not usually be privately owned. They will be hired, like in a car sharing scheme. Why? Because when your hire car can drive itself to you, it's as convenient as private ownership, much cheaper, and you do away with parking hassles and expenses. Car sharing is hugely more efficient, as you're left with cars that spend most of their time working and not parked up. Just so long as that car can drive itself to you, and quickly. And because the cars are shared, it makes sense to make most of the cars for single person travel only, as that is most of the real demand. So let's take a Twizy. The Twizy is essentially a single person car, though it can take two people in tandem. Let's modify the Twizy for a first step driverless car sharing application. I would make one side of the Twizy a solid wall, with a window that can't open. This makes the vehicle body extremely strong, which also means we can make the vehicle body very light. Include on top of that a carbon fibre roof. I would make it a series hybrid, so it's primarily battery powered, but included would be a small 10 kilowatt diesel electric generator for range. This car will be extremely efficient. Total weight will be about 300 kilograms or so, about a quarter of the weight of a standard sedan and it would consume around 10 to 20 percent of the energy of a typical car. I would also add a big squishy bumper for collision safety should the worst case scenario ever occur. To begin with it would not self-drive when someone is actually in it except in special private zones operating at 20 kilometers per hour or less but it will self-drive to the next customer which is the key capability to starting a driverless revolution off. Because as soon as your car can self-drive to the next customer, you have a system that can and probably will dominate about 70 to 90% of transport demand today, even in this most basic conservative form. We just need to be sure enough that the cars are safe enough by reasonable measure when in self-driving mode. So look again at my 300 kilogram cars. What is the worst thing that can happen? How much harm can they cause in self-drive mode and what are the chances of harm being done? That is the question to be asked because that is where the driveless revolution can realistically begin. Well, they are narrow and light and they have a very low center of gravity when in self-drive mode, that is when no one is in them. This means they have exceptional last second collision avoidance capability and even if they do hit something, because they are light, they will not hit hard. Compounding from this, collision avoidance capability provided by modern computers is already far beyond what we can and do expect from human drivers who are comparatively terrible. Yes, there are still risks. If a kid runs out on the road at the very last second, 
even an electronic system may fail to avoid a collision with some impact. But those risks will almost certainly be far, far less than what we already tolerate with heavy human-driven cars today. And that is why it's silly to think we should be waiting until 2040 to see the self-driving revolution begin. Again, driverless cars can have a deep impact even in this most cautious and conservative first step form. And you can start these cars off in easy applications first. Flat cities with wide roads and moderate populations, for example, and cities that do not deal with much ice and snow, etc. You can also employ specialised markings on the road for the cars to follow with embedded road-based RF chips so the cars can know their exact location with explicit precision, making them less dependent on GPS. There is still the issue of the cars getting confused with objects that they do not understand, but that is being rapidly worked through as the software is advanced. Note also, and this is important, there is the possibility of remote viewing and remote controlling a stored driverless car via the internet to quickly manage unusual scenarios that stop the cars in confusion. This is a feasible alternative for until the driverless software is more completely developed. Cars only need to be remote attended for the moment that they are stalled, and remember, to begin with, remote manual override will only be applied to very small cars that are being empty sent to the next customer. Safety concerns should be benign. Progress. Now, as soon as cars of this type, or very similar, get on the roads and deliver a service, refinement will no doubt be rapid, with proven safety records developed. In no time, the option of riding without driving should be legally given, which should be the rational response to the car's demonstrated safety. This progression could happen in literally months from an initial deployment. The far-reaching impact of driverless car technology is enormous. Driverless cars will achieve a revolution in mobility, transport efficiency and congestion relief through platooning. And they will revolutionise property development and civil operations all around as they provide for an ultra-efficient go-anywhere production line. Note, there will inevitably be microcars about the size of large vacuum cleaners delivering any odd item anywhere and for cheap and driverless microcars will have virtually no safety issues associated with them at all. Driverless cars are the ultimate disruptive technology from what we can know of today. Driverless cars will also lay the foundation for a fascinating robotics revolution that is fast coming down the pipe. What's coming out of robotics labs today is actually quite extraordinary. I write about this also if you want to Google for Building Utopia Mobile Robots. Again, I see no good reason for the driverless car revolution to begin in 2040. In theory at least, Google could push out a safe twizzy system of sorts in just a couple of years from now. The technology is essentially here and the economics are clear. No great mountain needs to be climbed to get this thing off the ground. And from there on in, it should be the beginning of the end for transport as we know it, as we merge into network-based transport with its remarkable efficiency, capacity and convenience. We will see. A final note, the politics. In any context that offers the potential for huge evolutionary advancement through innovation, such as areas like education and healthcare for example, and of course driverless cars, it becomes particularly important to have public policy in place that allows for free enterprise unhindered by excessive regulation. That is, if you want the far-reaching power of your disruptive technologies to be actualised to the benefit of all. I suggest keeping that in mind. Big government political parties that have contempt for the power of free markets will not serve you well. In particular, whatever you do, you want to get rid of your metropolitan urban limits that force cities into artificially high densities that likewise dictate costly and unwanted urban form. I have a dedicated video on this titled Housing Affordability for Real. 
Driverless cars will impact property development so profoundly that restricting ultra-efficient ex-urban development will be as good as economic suicide, as other competitive districts will not enforce these ideological constraints and will likewise offer more to people than what a restrictive locality could ever otherwise offer. And I'm speaking to New Zealand in particular when I state that. For more information, please see my blog post, Thoughts on the Driverless Revolution. Thank you.